Today we're going to take a look at the Thor Straight Razor. Naked Armor was nice and sent me out my very first true straight razor to review for you guys, as well as put together a little video for their channel as well. Now the Thor Straight Razor, you can buy it on its own, which comes in a box as well as comes with a leather case. Or you can buy it in the Thor Shave Set, which of course comes with your brush, your shave soap, a strop, and strop paste, and then of course the razor is stored up here, all in a nice wooden box. But this review is not about the whole set, it is strictly about the Thor razor. The Thor razor has a nice mahogany handle to hold onto with gold plated pins to hold it together. The blade itself is made out of stainless steel with a hardness of about 61 to 65. And now with a little bit of research, because I had no idea what HRC was, I found out that that's kind of a premium metal for knives. It's also one of the harder metals that you can get for knife making. The Naked Armor is also etched or printed their logo onto the blade itself actually twice on one side. The razor blade has a square point on it, and from what I can tell is a half hollow grind, which is basically just the blade profile from the end and how they ground out to form the blade. Now from my experience using this razor, well, when I first opened up the box, I thought that it was a nice box. It's put together well, and the razor definitely looks like a nice razor at first glance. However, as soon as I picked it up, I noticed that the handle on it was extremely loose. And being as how I've never used a razor like this before, I wasn't sure how tight it was supposed to be. So I did try to shave with it with a loose handle a couple of times and realized that that is actually probably kind of dangerous because the handle really should stay where you put it so that you're not fighting it while you are shaving. On my first couple of shaves, I also noticed that it didn't seem like the blade was all that sharp because it did and still does kind of catch on the hair sometimes. And actually, if you look back at the last couple of videos, I do believe that you can see that I have a little cut on my cheek here. And that is actually from this blade catching on the hair and not cutting through it. And it kind of skipped and I ended up with a small cut. Now luckily it didn't go very deep, but it definitely pointed out to me that this razor just isn't quite as sharp as it should be, especially for a razor that claims to be ready to go out of the box. Now I noticed on their website when I was looking up for the grind and all that of this razor that it does say that you should strop it first. However, as somebody that may have gotten this as a gift, there was no paperwork or suggestions or how-to manual for stropping or anything with this kit that I got. And I'm pretty positive that one does not come when you buy just the single razor. Which, by the way, they do suggest that if you're going to buy just a single razor that you have the strop because you need to strop it before use. To me, a razor that needs to be stropped before use should not be considered ready to go out of the box. But let's get back to that flimsy handle issue. So for me, it wasn't that big of a deal because I just had to do a little bit of research and see how to tighten it up as well as center the blade because the blade kept hitting on one side of the wood handle. So I took it over to the shop. I already have a ball peen hammer as well as a nice piece of metal that I was able to tighten up those pins and make it so that the blade has some friction at least and isn't flopping all over the place like it was when I first got it. Now, that's something that to me really isn't a huge deal. However, to somebody that may be in an apartment or not have these tools, that would be a reason to return the knife. Now I did contact 
them about that issue and all that I got back was we have a video about how to tighten up the handle with a link. Now I don't know how common it is to have loose handles like that but to me whoever is putting this together the first time probably should have tightened it way more than they did and it shouldn't have passed inspection. So to me that is just one of those things that kind of lowers the quality of the product that you're getting. As far as the leather case goes, I mean, it's a leather case. It gets the job done. The edges aren't burnished. It's just not a finished product in my mind, but it does do the job. You can very easily, you know, store it in this as well as use this for travel so that it's not, you know, getting dirty or poking a hole in any of your other products that you might bring in with you. As I mentioned earlier with the tugging, I did get a little bit better once I stropped it for a while, but I still had times when it did kind of catch and didn't cut through the hair right away. And it's not that I'm not used to holding a razor at a 30 degree angle because I, I am. I used the Shavette, which also needed that same 30 degree angle. I feel like this razor just is not honed to as good of specs as it could be, especially for the price. Now throughout the use of this razor, I have noticed that there's a few things that just don't seem quite right to me. Like there are scratches on the very end of this razor that definitely aren't from me, as well as there's a little piece of metal that's kind of hooked over on this corner here. And this razor just doesn't have the fit and finish to me for the price that they are asking for it. They do have a lifetime warranty on it, but only if it's unused, which to me that doesn't make sense because how are you supposed to know if you're gonna like the razor or not? Now, do I think that it is worth your money at $130? I have to say that I do not because honestly the fit and finish just isn't there. Like I said, there's that little hanging thing there. The handle I had to fix and tighten up myself. And it's just, it has the potential to be a $130 razor. But just be prepared that if you do buy it, you're going to want to hone it yourself as well as strop it as well as possibly even fix the loose handle issue. Now, do I think that it's worth the price if you buy it in the full kit? Well, considering that it's not worth it to buy it as a single, I would say absolutely not. However, if you're interested, you can get the full kit for about $189. I don't like giving products a bad review, but I'm going to be honest with you guys about products. And unfortunately, this one just is not worth what I think that it could be. It has the potential, but it's not. If you like this review or you want to see my review of Naked Armor Shave Soap or Brush, check out the playlist right up here. Down below, that's going to be a video that you may enjoy as well. Until next time, as always, you guys have a good one. Wow.